Now that we know what state is and how to listen and handle events in React, in this lecture let's learn how to work with forms in React and how to gather user input from the form. So in this application, I want to have a form where an admin can go ahead and add some new products to this product list. So let's go to VS Code and before we create a form, first I want to do some code refactoring here. So let me first scroll up and this node modules folder is open. Let me close this. Now, if you notice in this components folder, we have these three components. So we have this products component, we have this product details component, and we have this button component. And all these three components together are displaying one product in this product list. Okay, that means these three components are related. Now, as our React application will grow and we will keep on adding more and more component files, it will become hard to maintain. That means in this components folder, we can have hundreds or thousands of component files and managing those files will become harder and harder as the application will grow. So what we can do is we can put the related component files in a separate folder. For example, inside this components folder, I will create a new folder. Let's call this folder product list. And let's move these three files inside this product list folder. So here we have moved this button component, this product details component and this products component inside this product list folder. So we are using this products component inside this app component here, right? So here we are using this products component. Now, since the path of this product.js has changed here, we also need to update that path here at this import. So now we need to import this products component from this components folder. From here, we need to go to product list folder and there we have this products component. So with this, if I save the changes, if I go to the web page, you will notice that our application is still working, but now we have moved these related component files into a separate folder. Now we have also learned that this app component here is the root component of a React application. So in this app component, we nest our other components. But here, if you notice in this app component, what we are doing is we are writing some JSX code and we are also nesting this product component. But along with that, we are also writing some JSX code and it is making this app component heavier. Now I want to keep this app component as lean as possible and I only want to use the custom components inside this app component. So here what I'm going to do is inside this product list folder, I'm going to create a new file and here I will create a new component and I will call this component product list. Okay. And from this app component, I'm going to copy this JSX code. All right. And in the product list, let's first create a component function. Let's call it product list. And inside this, I'm going to return this JSX code, which we have copied from app component. All right. Let's also export this product list here, this product list component. So here, let's say port default product list. Now, since we are using this products component inside this product list component, we also need to import this product component from this product.js file. So I will go to this app component again and I will copy this import statement from here and let's use it before this component function. Now we want to use this product list component in this app component. But before that, if you notice this product list component is also expecting this products array. So from this app component, let's also copy this product array and let's use it inside this 
product list component. So before this function, I'm going to paste this products array. Now let's go ahead and let's import this product list in this app.js. So here let's use this import statement and we want to import product list from first we need to go to this components folder there we have this product list folder and there we have this product list.js file and in this product list.js file we are exporting this product list component so i'm going to use this product list component and i'm going to return it from this app component like this with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and here we have an error and it says cannot resolve this path and this error we have inside this product list.js file let's go back to vs code let's go back to product list.js file and actually here we need to say dot slash products because this products.js and this product list.js both are present in the same folder so we can simply go to the current directory and from there we can select this product.js file with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and now it is displaying our list of products and if you notice now our app.js is leaner and more readable and also since we have moved the related component files in a separate folder now these files are more manageable all right now we want to create a component for displaying a form in the web page and we will use that form for creating and adding new products so what i'm going to do is inside this components folder i'm going to create a new folder and i'm going to call this folder create product and inside this folder we will keep all those component files which is related to creating a product all right so inside this create product i'm going to add a new file a new component file and i'm going to call it create product.js here let's go ahead and let's create a function let's call it create product and let's also go ahead and export it now from this function we want to return some jsx code and that jsx should display a form in the web page so here let's use this return keyword let's use a set of parentheses and here first i'm going to create a div and on this div i'm going to add a class a bootstrap class for that we can use this class name attribute and the name of that bootstrap class is row inside this div i again want to add another div and on this div also i want to use a bootstrap class so again i will use this class name attribute and here let's add this bootstrap class and i also want to have a margin of auto so he for that we can say mx hyphen auto so this is another bootstrap class now inside this div i want to create a form now what i'm going to do is instead of defining this form in this create product component for this form i'm going to create a separate component okay so again inside this create product folder let's create a new file and let's call this product form so this product form file is going to display a form in the web page again here let's create the component function let's call it product form and let's also go ahead and export this product form component and from within this function we want to return a form again for that we can use a set of parentheses and inside this we can write the jsx code for displaying a form now in order to save some time i have already written that jsx i will share it with you in the description so i will copy it from here and let's use it inside this product form component okay now we want to use this product form inside this create product component so first we need to import this product form let's do that before this component function for that we need to use this import statement we want to import product form from then here we have this product form.js file 
and let's go ahead and let's use this product form component like an HTML element. Then let's also go ahead and let's use this create product component inside this app component. So first I will use a div here because we want to return more than one JSX element, right? I will move this product list component inside this div. And before this product list component, I want to use this create product component. Okay. And in order to use this create product component, we also need to import it from this file. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And this is how our form looks currently. Now I want to set the background color to white. So for that, on this second div, I'm going to use the style attribute and we have learned to this style attribute, we need to assign an object and to assign an object. First, we need to use a set of curly braces and inside that curly braces, we can use another set of curly braces to specify the object and inside these curly braces inside this object, we can use the CSS properties as the property of this object. So for example, I want to set the background color and I want to set it to white. Then I also want to have some padding. So I'm going to assign a string here and let's say top bottom, I want 10 pixel padding and left, right, 20 pixel padding. And let's also set some margin. So let's set the margin bottom and let's set this margin bottom to maybe 20. So 20 pixel. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And this is how our form looks like. So in this form, we have an input element for adding the product name. We have an input element of type number to add the price. All right. Then in this input element, we can set some description for the product. From here, we can select whether the product is available or not. Okay. Then using this input element, we can select the image of the product. And when we click on this add product button, we want to add that product in this product list. Now for creating this form, I am using a very basic HTML. So if I go to product form component, you will notice that here I'm using a very basic HTML with some bootstrap classes. Okay. So here we have this input element for getting the product name. Then using this input element, we can set the price of the product. Using this input element, we can set the description for the product. We can use this input element for selecting whether the product is available or not. And then using this input element, we can select the image for the product. And finally, we have this submit button. So when this submit button will be clicked, the product will be added to the product list and it will be displayed in the web page. Okay. So this form is being displayed here in the web page. Now what we want is whenever the user enters some value in these input fields, we want to gather that value and we want to do something with that value. Let's see how we can do that in the next lecture.